Okay, we're back. We're live. It's 4 o'clock rock. I'm Jay Fidel, Think Tech. And this is, what is this? This is Think Tech Asia. Think Tech Asia. Yes, that's why and I'm that's, here. That's Ray Tsuchiyama. <laughs> that's why he's here. This is the time regularly reserved for Ray and Russell Liu, who is in transit right now, so he's not here, but I'm here instead. And so we're going to talk about Think Tech Asia. That's right. And we're going to talk about, um, you know, and uh, you're more than an informed citizen. You're a very well-informed citizen, Ray. Uh, we're going to talk about North Korea. We're going to talk about North Korea and relations with China, relations with, what, uh, South Korea and Japan. Uh, relations with Russia, if you will, and certainly relations with uh, Mr. Trump and the United <laughs> right. States. And um, all these are getting very, very complicated now. It's very hard to figure out the dynamic, and it's very hard for poor Donald to figure out, <laughs> because he, he has trouble doing figuring out long strategies. But anyway, Ray, what are your thoughts about what's going on with North Korea? Where are we going with it? North Korea emerged from World War II. And it was a colony, both North and South, it was one country, until uh, even through the 50 years under Japanese colonial rule. And of course, during that time, uh, Japanese implemented education uh, economy, also suppressed Korean language and really suppressed nationalism, Korea as a, their own country. So when August, September 1945, that was when suddenly uh, the Japanese left uh, police and army and, and settlers left for Japan, and there was a vacuum. However, in the north, there was a man named uh, Kim who came in, uh, and uh, he became uh, the leader in the north, and he was a guerrilla fighter. In the south, we, uh, the United States uh, came in, and uh, with our own man, Simon Rhee, as president of South Korea, and, uh, but the South had more people, the North had more resources. So it was an imbalanced country from the very start. And then comes the war in 1950. And out of that wreckage of the war, there is still no peace treaty. And if you fast forward to 2017, we have a new leader of North Korea, who is the grandson of Mr. Kim, the guerrilla leader who's 33 years old right now. Uh, he looks and, like he's 17. <laughs> and he's educated partly in uh, Switzerland, uh, abroad, so he must speak English and French and Korean. And he has been devo developing over the last six months more uh, missile tests than the last several years combined. Uh, this has been a, uh, a, a, an area that has uh, uh, struck um, uh, fear anger, frustration among all the states, South Korea, Japan, and the United States, and China to a certain degree. And that's how he's proceeding uh, in this, uh, in this he's game. He's a rogue in every way. That's I mean, right. remember, don't forget Sony. Don't forget his uh, hacking, state hacking. Right. He's been doing that. And he's also been doing, um, you know, hacking on banks in Asia. Right. Are you familiar with that? Uh, and, and finally, I mean, in, in, in general, he's been, he's been killing uh, even members of his family who he, he perceives oppose him in some way. So all in all, this guy is a complete rogue, not engaging in any way with the West, refusing to talk to anyone, and it, not willing to make a deal on any terms about anything. And my question to you, and if you can answer this, you're a better man than I, Ganga Din. <laughs> Why? From the very start, as a country, North Korea, it has a memory of the Japanese occupation. It was not its own country. So it's based on nationalism, independence, and that it must be its own country uh, from, uh, and, and, and enjoying a, and, uh, and also it looks forward to unification as, as one country. Now there are people, even in South Korea, who believe that there's a conspiracy among the great powers, uh, China, Russia, and the US, to keep Korea separate. So if they got together as a unified country, they would be a world power. Now, going back to uh, all these activities by the leader, he is really continuing this, um, the, all these acts to show that they are independent, and should be treated as a great power, a nuclear power, uh, by the West and China and Russia and so forth. And that they have their place in the world, 
and that they fear that the United States, with a carrier group, with uh, uh, 40,000 soldiers in South Korea, with a new air defense system coming in, and radar spying on North Korea, Japanese jets suddenly appearing, accompanying US bombers, uh, flybys by uh, North Korea. These are all, from their perspective, threatening, uh, threatening the independence of Korea. So they must have a nuclear deterrent so that they will be respected in the world, world order. Well, I'm wondering about, you know, 33, but looks younger. I'm wondering about this whole attitudinal thing about uh, finding scapegoats, you know, and uh, doing the kinds of things that dictators do to stay in power. Well, you know, f finding, you know, enemies everywhere, behind every tree. And when you do that, you know, it, it justifies you in killing people, I mean, in your country. It justifies you. It justifies you in building weapons at, at the expense of even feeding your country. Um, it justifies all this nastiness somehow. But the, the bottom line, I'm, I'm just throwing a possibility at you, is that he should stay in power. He doesn't want to lose being in power. That's why he's paranoid. Well, um, you refer to the uh, assassination or murder of his half brother, uh, Kim Jong. Uh, but there have been ben. others, others uh, around him, his own family. Uh, but that, that one was, I think, uh, if you look at it from his perspective, that he felt that this half-brother was actually be being groomed by China. They were paying for him to stay in Macau. They were paying for him to, they were giving him, you know, all kinds of funding. And they were kind of grooming him and kind of uh, seeing if there was an opportunity to insert uh, Kim Jong-nam uh, back into North Korea. This was uh, something that uh, Kim Jong-un uh, feared. And so uh, he said, aha, China, you think that you can control you know, North Korea. Let's see what, what happens after his out of the equation. Mom, we'll so China immediately doesn't have anybody to slip back in. Because that is something for any country to influence another country, you must have people to replace the current uh, uh, powerful leaders. If you don't have leaders, they're all yes men to the leader, then you don't have a um, you know, counter to the leadership. Mm -hmm. So China is also in a, a strange uh, uh, spot of not able to influence uh, the political uh, dynamics of North Korea also. Well, um, yes, and, and China, I've heard it, I've read it. I've read it to, to the point where um, China doesn't want them crossing the, the refugees from North Korea crossing the Yellow River because it'll, it'll be on them. They'll have to take care of those people and it'll be a mess because there'll be millions of people, which is interesting because there's only 25 million people in the whole <laughs> North Korea. But I mean, a half of North Korea would walk away if they could. I, I, I think they recognize uh, somehow, even though you know, you can't get media in North Korea, but I think they recognize the well, problem. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a um, you know, military uh, state, so you cannot even move from one village to another. There's no freedom of movement. You're absolutely right. You're stuck in your farming village or town or, or city. But also, not only the uh, refugees coming to cross in the Yalu for food and medicine and, uh, uh, and, you know, a better place, you also suddenly have, uh, if, if, there was unification, South Korean soldiers and U.S. soldiers at the Yalu border. Remember, uh, when they intervened during the Korean War, they had warned the U.S. many times, do not come north, you know, do not come north. This is, you're coming to uh, uh, attack uh, uh, China, you know, if you come up all the Yalu. China was warning. Uh, yeah. Yes, China through, through uh, repeatedly. And, and at the same time, they were sending over 250,000 so-called volunteers and this uh, contributed to great um, uh, defeat for UN forces, and they had to retreat back to uh, Seoul and so forth. And the current president's parents also were part of the Hong Nam uh, evacuation uh, with the Marines, and that's how they ended up in South Korea. So th the current president even has relatives or you know, uh, yeah. back family back well, in North Korea. I think you can find a lot of refugees from North Korea because people regularly escape or try. Right. And it's, it's really sad. It's like East Germany back, back when, but maybe worse, because the repression is that much greater. And it goes back to the question of why? What's his long plan? Would he create this, this police state, ultimate police state, dumping on the people all the time, uh, making, putting them behind the eight ball on everything, spend all the money he has, everything, I mean, in a poor country. What do we find that the gross uh, domestic product of North Korea is like, what, 
$40 billion. $40 billion as, a, yeah. as opposed to $600 billion in South Korea. Look at the comparison. I think the Maui County uh, budget is a billion dollars now. So, yeah. <laughs> so that's only 40 times that. They're not doing very well. And, and, and they, they're starving. And, and, yeah. you know, whatever they say, whatever you know, they say. But, but the question is, why would he do? What's his long plan? He's educated. He must have a long plan. Uh, aside from staying in power, it's got to be something more complex than that. What does he expect to happen? Well, in also, five or 10 it's years? not himself. There's a give and take. You know, you go back to Rome or Carthage. I mean, there are states where um, there's a leader, but they must have support of the legions of Rome or the military of North Korea. So we, you see uh, Kim Jong Il surrounded by very senior military all the time. They're clapping away, and they get better uh, housing, better food. Kim Jong-un. Yeah, uh, right, Kim Jong-un, I'm sorry, uh, who, the current leader, surrounded by senior military officials who get better housing, food, uh, access to better medical treatment. So that, that's, a, that's a cadre, a force that really protects them and really benefits from, this, uh, from the uh, continuing um, uh, rule by, by Kim Jong-un. Well, I mean, I mean, really, it's uh, it's fascinating to watch this happen I mean, from his point of view. Because it, does it really get him anywhere to have nuclear? Does it really get him anywhere to be, threaten people? You know, fact is, a lot of people, a lot of companies, multinationals, would go to North Korea in a heartbeat to try to do business because there's a market there. There's, it's a pretty sexy market. They could open it up to Western goods and whatnot, or for that matter, Chinese goods. I'm not sure the Chinese goods are there. Um, although I understand that China sells North Korea missile parts. China's part of the missile problem, okay? Um, in any event, um, you know, he could have had economic relationships with many countries in the world, all to his benefit. He could have negotiated all kinds of trade deals and enhanced the economy of North Korea. He could have made it a you know, a much more successful economy. He chose not to do that. Right, and, and the philosophy or ruling ideology, Juche, um, of uh, self-reliance. Remember going back in time, you know, uh, under the colonial rule, Japan did that. And Japan flooded the country with Japanese-made uh, manufactured goods, Japanese, uh, um, uh, you know, education, all kinds of rule. They don't want anything of the outside. They make their own everything. Uh, so $40 billion may not be a lot, but yet they're able to uh, supply their military, supply meager f f rations. They, they were in, it's like being in war. They believe they are in war. With, and and uh, technically, it's true. There is no peace treaty. Since oh, he's in a state of constant war. Right. Uh, and all these provocations, not only against the United States, but every country in the region. Uh, it's really too bad. And, and uh, it's too bad about the countries that could have an effect. Uh, and right after this break, Ray, we should talk about, you know, the relations between the United States and North Korea, zero. Uh, the relations between China and North Korea, strange. I mean, strange to us. Relations of uh, South Korea, North Korea, right. zero. Comple but it's complex. Japan, zero. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and what, what could be done to get Kim Jong-un's attention? That's the question in the next part of this show. We'll take a short break. We'll think about that. We'll come right back. A veteran, my victory was finding the strength to be a champion. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. At DAV, we help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory was finishing my education. My victory was getting help to put our lives back together. DAV provides veterans with a lifetime of support. My victory is being there for my family. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. This guy looked familiar. He calls himself the Ultra Fan, but that doesn't explain all this. Why? Why? He planned this party, planned the snacks, he even planned to coordinate colored shirts, but he didn't plan to have a good time. Go, go, go. Now you wouldn't do this in your own house, so don't do it in your team's house. Know your limits and plan ahead so that everyone can have a good time.
Okay, we're back, we're live, I'm Jay Fidel, and uh, I'm with Ray Tsuchiyama, informed citizen today. We're talking about North Korea uh, here on, uh, what is it, Asia in Review. No, it's Think Tech Asia. Think Tech Asia, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank show, you, Ray. Yeah, no, what but, I you, but you cover so much in Think Tech, so. So anyway, you were talking about Panmunjom right. and your trip there. Right. What did you learn there in terms of the humanity of the situation? I visited there um, with on the U.S. military uh, guide uh, there, and uh, it is truly a demilitarized area, and that's where representatives of North Korea, China, the U.S., and South Korea met during the early uh, end of the war to really uh, hammer out a uh, armistice. We can't call it a peace treaty. There is no peace treaty. An armistice to cease fire uh, between the opposing forces. The area is, is a no man's land, so there are North Korean guards who wander in and out, and if you're uh, very close, they are taking a picture of you, and you can take a picture of them. And you were told not to make any kind of gesture, like even this kind of gesture, because they'll take a photo and say that, you, again, a Western provocation or you know, menace, menacing uh, gesture to the North. Uh, I, the area around is very beautiful. It's full of birds and animals because nobody goes there. <laughs> no, this is very strange. And there are some farms uh, that the South Korean government would give higher uh, stipends for farmers to farm in that area. Across, there are farms. You can see some people, but there are loudspeakers that blast uh, propaganda in Korean uh, across. And there are Potemkin villages where people seem to be living there, but probably not that they're used as uh, guard props. props. Yeah, props, a Potemkin village. And, uh, but again, it's a very beautiful area, forested. It looks like uh, areas in the Rocky Mountains, you know. Uh, and, and so uh, it, it, it was a feeling of very sadness that here uh, north are all these people who are related to the people of South Korea, who would, it would be wonderful if they met and got together, but they can't. It's not going to happen, you know. I mean, there have been various voices over the years that have called for a reunification, but it, it seems further away now than it ever was. And South Korea is really angry at North Korea for all the provocations, and North Korea is just mean and mad all the time. I wish they'd get human, but that's not, that's not in the cards. The whole thing is sort of dealing the other way. And, um, you know, I, I just wonder if you think, for example, that uh, Donald Trump, uh, can find a way to, you know, break this down somehow and avoid a nuclear war, because I think we're dealing with that. He's, he's going to have the weapons to reach Alaska, Hawaii, and one of these days soon, the mainland as well, and he's wild enough to push the button, that guy. Um, how can Donald Trump deal with that? Well, I, uh, first of all, I hope this, that never of happens. Of course, <laughs> we all hope that. But we're, we're, I mean, the threats yeah. are real, and 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 he doesn't he doesn't respond to you know ordinary counter threats. He doesn't respond to that, now, except by getting getting more of the same. Uh, the most recent visit, and I I don't want to make it a joke, but Dennis Rodman did visit, and he <laughs> may have brought a letter t uh, to. Uh, Kim Jong uh, Un, uh, they didn't meet. He, they, Kim uh, uh, leader uh, and, and Dennis Rodman did not meet this time. Uh, at the same moment, Arthur Wambi w was returned, unfortunately, in a uh, coma state, and he passed away. This did not help uh, U.S. North Korean relations at all. Um, and so there has been a, a few uh, NGOs in uh, North Korea uh, helping in TB uh, and some uh, health-related uh, missions. There are, of course, UN uh, missions into no North Korea, again, dealing with health, uh, medical, uh, and so forth. But you're correct that there hasn't been a dialogue. There hasn't been, and the North Koreans are really a very proud people. They, they want to see a high level uh, uh, equivalent of people visiting and talking, or it could be held in a neutral city. And, uh, remember, President, uh, former President Clinton visited uh, Pyongyang to, uh, for the release of and some journalists there. Sure, that was, uh, that was Vanguard, uh, the Vanguard journalists, uh, two. American Korean, right. Korean American women who erroneously crossed uh, or went to the center of the right. Yellow River, and the Koreans picked them up, right. the North Koreans picked them up and put them in jail for a year. 
very traumatic. Right. But Lisa there, Ling was that's one. Lisa Ling. Yeah, there, there, uh, uh, but you can see that it took uh, the efforts of a former president who came in and left, and uh, you know he got him out. Yeah, that's right. And so there has been, again, uh, I, I really uh, don't know um, uh, exactly what I to be involved, but, but I have some ideas. I, I think uh, the United States and China, uh, South Korea and Japan also, has to engage people who are North Koreans outside of North Korea. There's a North Korean uh, diaspora in Japan. There are North Korean citizens in Japan. They send back money, remittances, to uh, their families in North Korea. That's part of the $40 billion. There are, North, uh, there are Korean citizens of uh, China uh, in Jilin province. Uh, uh, you see a passport that says Jin, it's actually Kim. Mm. And so they're ethnic Koreans who are PRs. They speak Korean at home. They learn Mandarin. Uh, they are so th there are also North Koreans who work in Beijing. And, and there's a Korea town in, in Beijing, interestingly enough. Uh, so, and so um, I think there has to be a lot more interaction with people who can go back. Into, these people can go in and out of North Korea very freely, and they speak Korean, mm -hmm. uh, to engage them and, and, and establish much more humanitarian or medical kind of programs. Uh, they need it in North Korea, and uh, there have been a lot of interaction in that way. So I think it, it has to come from grassroots and also at a, at a high level. Okay. Um, but uh, what good would that do with Kim Jong-un? He's the one running the place. That's correct. Uh, there, uh, I think Kim Jong-un wants respect in, in, in many ways. Uh, he wants uh, to really have a seat at a table. He wants to talk. And uh, he's, of course, continuing this uh, program, which is uh, causing consternation uh, in Japan, South Korea, and China, and Russia, and the US. But he delights in this also. And, but he, I think he, he needs to have a dialogue in some way to really uh, to stop his program. But you see, is it stopping the program entirely, or is it bringing him aboard as a respected member into the uh, Club of Nations with nuclear capability? Because once he loses that, he has no trump card. <laughs> in a way, you heard it here. <laughs> <on> the, <laughs> he has no, he has nothing else to. What uh, good is that to. Trump card going to get him, though? He well, doesn't seem to want anything. Well, he he believes that uh, he can get uh, more things uh, out of uh, economic aid and so forth. Remember, there has been a history of uh, South Korean investment in uh, North Korea, but they all were failures. There were partnerships in, in travel, in, in new factories, in a free trade zone. They, they didn't work out. So I think North Koreans don't want to have a South Korean or, or Japanese or Chinese or, or US companies coming in and really controlling and managing their country. What they fear is Libya. They, they talk about Libya often. They saw, saw Muammar Gaddafi overthrown, and then they, what they perceived was foreigners uh, and, and money and, and weapons flowing the country, and it became a chaotic place. Which it is now today. And they, they see, uh, Kim uh, Jong-un looks at Muammar, look what he got in the end. And uh, he, he doesn't want to be, end up like that. That's a pretty interesting idea. You know, that um, he's, he's actually trying to save his own life here, because he, he's, he must realize he's kind of on a fragile tissue there that the uh, country is in terrible str straits, and if it falls apart, he's not going to be well-liked by anybody. And, but during that last year, in spite of the $40 billion economy, he has brought in some improvements to uh, housing, to education. This is really strange. But when you think about it, North Korea is the center of hacking, right? When you, right? Yeah. Well, they have developed a cadre of young software engineers who went to the public, who, who were graduates of the public North Korean school system. It must be good that they, they are doing something. It's, getting, it's a good job <laughs> in North Korea to yes. uh, get a job at all. But they have uh, gone through a program equivalent to a, a bachelor's, master's, or PhD in computer science in the US or and Japan. They use it for black hat, black yeah, hat but, uh, but, hacking. But again, uh, you can see that they're doing something 
education-wise that other countries have failed in, in, in their own way. It's nice to know they have that industry. <laughs> but, you know, okay, so Trump has not been successful. I mean, he's been trying to do his win-by-intimidation routine on them. It doesn't work. And he's been trying to get, you know, China to help him right. by intimidating China. And that doesn't work either. And I, mean, I don't know what else he's trying. Maybe he gave up already. I, I think he kind of gave up already. Um, and he, what he did, I think what he did, Ray, is he turned it over to the military. So you guys, you know, prepare and have some threatening exercises out there and, and be ready to shoot their missiles down or whatever. Whether we have the capability to do that, I'm not sure. Well, uh, the carry groups have uh, uh, been nearby. There have been Japanese fighters accompanying uh, U.S. bombers. Uh, there's that anti-defense, uh, uh, anti-missile defense system being set up in the center of uh, northern uh, Seoul there in a golf course. There have been a lot of things happening on the military side. You're absolutely right. Uh, China also, um, you know, really is hands off of North Korea because uh, North Korea is like a, like you say, a rogue, rogue state. But they have a lot of economic business ties with uh, companies selling little and parts. And they don't want refugees crossing the border. That's right, and, and parts and rocket, you know, missile parts and little things uh, flowing in. And uh, China, especially Macau, is used a conduit for uh, laundering money. And there's some uh, money made through drugs. Uh, and you're so China's right. happy with the status quo. Well, I don't think North Korea is threatening China. Notice? It's Other not, places, but it's, not China. It's, yeah, it's not, but it, I, I don't think China controls North Korea. That is, that is something that uh, people from the outside believe that they can choke North Korea through, um, you know, uh, stopping exports into North Korea. Well, the economy is such a, such a small economy, and remember, it's self-reliant. They make everything themselves, mm -hmm. really. And there, is, there are imports uh, of a high quality, like uh, pork or uh, seafood and for the military uh, elite. But aside from that, the rest of the country really is on survival rations. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, so we have the big players. We have the United States. We have, we have, um, we have China. We have Russia. Well, maybe, maybe you can say Japan is there. It's there, anyway. Um, if, if those parties got together, it's my last question right. to you. If those parties got together and, and had some kind of consensus strategy in dealing with North Korea, would that work? And what would that strategy, what could it, might it be, uh, if, you know, if we can figure out what it might be? I think Japan would rather uh, be part of a uh, consensus, of course. Sure. Uh, China, if, you know, everybody fears unilateral <laughs> uh, uh, kinds of uh, actions. Either it's, uh, it's uh, uh, an a, uh, economic ban again, or uh, even arresting North Koreans outside, uh, shutting down bank accounts. I mean, you can continue to do this. And um, everybody, of course, abhors the uh, uh, military action, of course. People talk about the surgical strike. And I think that's a, uh, nothing is surgical it's very in, dangerous. In, in North Korea. Because uh, they, they'll have enough time to push the button, and, 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 and many people will die. They, there are many uh, units. Uh, what makes North Korea so difficult is that communications and so forth is a very low level, when you think about it. It's not a sophisticated uh, communications electronics uh, uh, network. And if from uh, uh, satellites, you take a photo of of uh, the Korean Peninsula, uh, Seoul and everything is lit up at night. Only Pyongyang has electricity in the yeah, night. Yeah. So uh, it, 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 how can you get uh, um, listen in to communications when there aren't any? Very, yeah. very the whole thing is an armed camp, and it's, it's dedicated to be staying in But on camp. the other hand, I think uh, your, your notion of, of the uh, uh, multilateral consensus building has to has to develop. You know, the problem though, Ray, and I, I'm just my last, got to be my last question too, running out of time. The problem is that, and it goes back to Simon Winchester in a chapter in his Pacific book about how, in fact, we got to recognize the fact that the U.S. is declining. Uh, it's not only Trump, just over time we're declining as a, as a world power and, and against the emergence of other countries which are becoming more economic and world powers. So if we thought at a certain point in time that we could lead those other countries into a consensus, into a joint strategy dealing with Korea, that seems less likely now. It seems less likely because of the trend 
the decline, you know, the geopolitical decline, but also because of Trump. He, he, he doesn't have the respect, not, not only in, in Asia, but in Europe, but everywhere. He doesn't have the, what do you want to call it, the, um, the diplomatic respect. And so it's, it's less likely now that we could lead that group into a consensus. The question, and a really interesting question, is whether they will do it ever without us. Is it in their collective interest to actually combine, actually make a multilateral effort to... Without the U.S.? Well, with the diminished capability of the U.S., I guess. Uh, you know, somebody leading without the U.S. at the top of the leadership, kind of. And, and ultimately work that out with North Korea. Put the necessary pressure, whether it's, uh, you know, the stick or the carrot, some kind of pressure on North Korea to bring them to the table and make a deal with them. Because right now we seem like a, a long distance from that. Yes, and, and what's more complex, of course, is that um, relations between Japan and South Korea are, aren't that great. <laughs> It's better, slightly better before, than before with the new president, the Korean president, Moon. And he's trying to restore uh, some relationships. So uh, Japan, the leadership of Japan, also Abe, is under great domestic political pressure. Uh, it's very hard for him to take uh, leadership. Russia, I, I don't think Putin thinks of uh, the Far East that much. He, he's focused on Crimea, uh, Crimea uh, the, the uh, Ukraine. Belarus, yeah, Ukraine, and those areas. Not really uh, concerned about the Far East. China is the one that's the most impacted. Uh, they see the carrier groups and so forth. Uh, just uh, last week, there was a destroyer that went through the... Uh, disputed uh, so, uh, shows again. So they see the, the uh, Pacific Command and, and military are always thinking to restrain, contain China. And that's what they're always angry and frustrated about. So they're not, not about to go out and do our bidding on this and not about to let us lead this consensus. So we have a kind of standoff there. It's a standoff between Korea and the others and between, Korea, between China and the U.S. Um, Things will have to change, but then, you know, things do change. They always change. The only problem is when they change like this, you can't predict what they're going to do. So I guess at the end of our discussion, we come to the place where we started right. our discussion. It's very, very I don't hard. have any, uh, if you ask me what the situation will be in six months, I don't know. I really don't know. Nobody knows. Uh, and, and, but if they uh, continue to fire missiles uh, toward Japan and so forth, what, when, does that uh, when does that draw some kind of uh, response? I don't know. I don't know. And, and the Japanese are very fearful. They have drills. They're, they are just uh, anxious that uh, one of them will be a real one. And, and that will be uh, aimed at one of their well, you know, Western If I was them, I'd be cities. concerned. Yes. If I were in South Korea, I'd be very concerned, and I, as, a, as the U.S., too. So this is to be watched, and it means you and I have to discuss this again going forward. And, and again, uh, I have to say, though, people in the South have families and relatives in the North. It's not an easy binary decision. It's a very family uh, well, decision. Yeah. So, so it's, it's not like um, it's separate, far-off country. It's, it's their family members. It's a global decision. Thank you, Ray. Okay. Ray Tujiyama, informed citizen. Thank this you. This is Think Tech Asia. Did I get that right? <laughs> <laughs> Aloha. That's right. <laughs>